Hi, and welcome to Back or Breaks It Down. In this episode, we continue to work with exponential models. Um, these models are going to focus on half-life. And then we're going to use logarithms to solve those exponential models. Okay, so half-life. So you know how like doubling time was the time it took for a quantity to double? Half-life is the time it takes for a quantity to become half. So just like doubling time, we have three half-life formulas. All of them are essentially based on the main one that just says that one half is equal to b to the t power. Because sometimes like they give us the base of the exponential function. Um, we saw that we had to find the base in an earlier problem using our change factor formula. Um, other times they give us a percent rate for like a non-continuous um, exponential situation. So then the base is equal to one minus R. And if it is continuous, then our exponent is negative because the K is the rate but negative because it's a DK situation. So let's take a look at a few examples. So number five says let a equal 1200 times 0.75 to the t power um, be the amount of bacteria in an experiment t hours after the experiment started. What is the half-life of the bacteria? Um, so in this problem here, the fact that they gave me the function, um, I want to use this formula here because basically I know what b is. All right, so I don't care about the 1200 here. Because remember, the initial value really doesn't matter in any of these problems. I never need them. So I'm going to have 1 half is equal to b to the t power. b is 0.75. So this to the t power. And then I'm simply going to solve this very simple equation using logarithms. So I'm going to take the natural log on both sides. Because this will free the exponent. Um, logarithms undo exponentials. They're inverse functions. So I get the natural log of 1 half is equal to t times the natural log of 0.75. And then I would simply divide both sides by 0.75 to determine what t is. So this is what I'm calculating. And I have done that. And I got 2.4 hours. So that's how long it will take before basically we have 1,600 bacteria. Mm. <laughs> well, at least it's not growing. Um, tritium decays at a continuous rate of 5.471%. Find the half-life of tritium. So we have a continuous situation. This is the percent rate. We're finding the half-life. So half-life continuous. This is the formula. One half e to the negative kt power is what it looks like. So we're going to have, oops, that is not a pen. We're going to have one half is equal to e to the negative kt power. So k is going to be 0 0.05471. And don't forget the variable and the exponent, so t. And so now I'm just going to solve this using logarithms. So I'm going to take the natural log on the left. I'm going to take the natural log of the right. Remember, when we take the natural log of base e exponential functions, all that we're left with is the exponent. So all I have left is, point, is negative 0 0.05471 t. And so in order to get t all by itself, I simply need to divide both sides by the negative 0 0.05471. And so this is what I'm calculating. And I got like 12.7. I don't know like exactly what the unit is, but 12.7 time units, whatever the time units are. <laughs> okay. But it was a half-life problem. It was a continuous problem. So I knew I was using my 1 half equals e to the negative kt power formula. All right, one more. So the half-life of a Twinkie is 14 days. 
I think this is after it's been removed from its plastic packaging because according to Zombieland, Twinkies will survive the apocalypse. Yeah, that's why I don't eat Twinkies. Find the daily decay rates. Okay. So what they want here is R. I have no idea what it is. Um, the only thing I know here, I know that the half-life itself is 14 days. Um, so the 14 days, that's what T is in all of our formulas. Because in all of our formulas, you'll notice that T is the in the exponent. So T is the time. So I know that T is 14. Um, I have to figure out what R is. Um, so I can use that formula to find it. Um, or I think it's easier to start with this formula and then basically find B. And then from B, we can figure out what R is. Um, so I'm going to start with that one because it's like the simplest one to use. Right? So I'm going to have like one half is equal to B to the 14th power because that's basically all I know. Now, I'm not going to take the natural log of both sides here because that will free the exponent, but then I'll have 14 times the natural log of B. And what is that? Exactly. Um, so the way that we undo a power, the 14th power, is we take the 14th root. Um, so think of like when we take square roots, I'm taking the 14th root. So I'm going to write it like this, 1 over 14. Because if I do that, 14 times 1 over 14 is 1. And that'll be ideal. But I have to do it to both sides. So I also have to raise the 1 half to the one over 14 power. It's really hard to see what I'm writing here. Um, but on my calculator, this is what I'm doing. So I'm taking the one half, I'm raising it to the one over 14th power. Okay, and that's gonna give me my base. So I did that and I got approximately 0.9517, okay. So now I have to think like, okay, what is the rate associated with that? So we have a rate rule that basically says that we go with the base minus one times 100. And if we do that, this tells us what the rate, the percent rate of our exponential function is. So that's what I'm going to do here with the 0.9517. I'm going to take that minus one times 100. I'm going to ignore the fact that it's negative because all that negative means is that it's decay. And I got 4.83%. So I started with my one half equals b to the t power it is my most simplest formula to work with. And let's face it, the only thing I knew here was t. From there, I had to figure out what was b. So I had to take the 14th root of both sides. I got that B was 0.9517. And then since I ultimately want to know my rate, I have to use my rate rule, base minus 1 times 100. And that's how I got the 4.83%. Okay. Um, but half-life, basically all half-life problems can be set up the same way with like 1 half is equal to the base to the T power. What is the base? That is the question, right? If it's non-continuous, the base is 1 minus r. And if it's continuous, the base is e to the negative k power. And that's how Backer breaks it down.